Hello, everyone. Welcome to TV Literate, the podcast that unapologetically enjoys trashy TV. I'm Jillian. And I'm Megan. (sighs) (laughs) I don't even know what to say after this because it's like, and we're going to be covering some tough stuff today because we're doing the Duggar trial. Yeah, this is not this is not a normal episode for us. We're not going to be talking about any Uh -uh. TV shows at all. Um, And we're going to be talking about some very sensitive topics. Yeah. And so this is definitely one of those episodes that if you are uncomfortable hearing about, you know, any type of any type of sexual assault, any type of child abuse or child mistreatment. um, Basically, if you have a trigger and you know who Josh Duggar is and they coincide, we will see you next week. And we love you. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Thank you. You put it perfectly. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, we have we have to talk about this. It's very big news. And I mean, it's yeah. like directly relates to everything we talk about every week. So, yeah. Yes. Uh, the good news is, though, can we, we should just start. Should we just start out with the good news? Let's just do it. Yeah, we'll just do it. He's this motherfucker is going to prison. Yeah, for possibly up to 40 years. And he's definitely going to be on the sex offender registry and not going to be around people or, I mean, not people, but children. So I th- I think he's actually only up to 20 years because I think he can only oh, be fuck. convicted on one or like his sentenced on one of the charges. They both carry 20 year yeah. sentences. So I think the Damn. maximum he can spend is 20 years, but I think <sighs> it's likely it'll be closer to like 10 probably. Hopefully. Fuck. I mean, yeah, but... Yeah, I mean, I want this man to get 40 years. Don't give me concurrent sentences. Give me sequential sentences. He's got to pay for both, buddies. Yeah, no, I agree. Like, this man should just rot in prison, as far as I'm concerned. (laughs) But at least he was found guilty. At least there was, you know, some type of justice that was found. I mean, I don't think any type of, I, I just don't think any type of, like, I don't know, prison sentence is enough for this type of crime and this type Behavior. of exactly um but yeah. at least he was found guilty so we can at least yeah. i don't know it's just a, it's a it's a, a victory we can sleep for sure. easy for at least probably the next 10-ish years yeah and so can his children well not really but a little maybe a oh, little yeah. bit easier because remember he has seven children including a literal newborn baby that was born in october so this man uh-huh. is now no longer going to be allowed around those children or any other children uh which is God. how it should be Yeah, which is how it should be. I mean, I hope he's not allowed around them. There's, you know, a light possibility he might be able to, but fuck. Right. I don't know. Yeah, either way, at least he's not a free man um, Mm -hmm. able to do whatever he wants. At least for the next, his his infant daughter can be 10 years old before she meets him, which seems to be out of his age demographic. Oh, God. I don't even want to talk about that, but um but yeah it is i don't know it's i was just listening to the trial because i have been following it very diligently throughout the week because i have no life at all i was not impressed with the defense's argument which we'll get into all of this in a little bit but i was not impressed at all um and so i would have been i don't know part of me was like i would be surprised if he wasn't found guilty but i i at this point i'm not surprised by anything especially when it comes to the legal system and like justice in the in the united states like just anything can happen um so but it was nice especially because oh sorry go on no i was just gonna say it was nice that it was like actually it actually like went the way it was it should have gone this time because that does not always happen no, and I was going to say, especially because when he admitted to it, when he was 15 or whatever, um, the fucking cop that booked him, not booked him, but like whatever they did. I don't even Talk know exactly him. what they did. Gave him a stern Talk talking to. to. Yeah. Is in jail for like the next 26 years or something for distribution of child pornography. Like, yeah, this uh, shit. You just is hooked sh- up a kid who was fucked up with a child pornographer. Yeah, like this shit <laughs> runs deep and it's like. There's so many things that can happen that could, you know, make it him not be found guilty. So it was just it's it's nice that it was that this went it worked exactly out how today. It was supposed to go. Yeah, and it's just like I don't know. It's it was nice. I think especially considering the fact that, like you said, he was never really held accountable for his previous no 
like horrors that he had committed on his own sisters and <laughs> i know i feel so bad when i say like indiscretions because that feels yeah. like i'm like euphemizing them but i just don't want to be like because he molested his sisters yeah every yeah sentence. well i think yeah Ugh. i think i think anna would say childhood wrong choices or teenage wrong decisions but that is certainly not what these are mm -hmm. um teenage wrong decision yeah that's like sneaking out like late at night going to a party that's like a teenage you know yeah. issue that's yeah it's not molesting your sisters anna sorry but anyway no. it's just nice that like because part of the part of the trial was found finding whether or not um evidence from those molestations would be admissible in court during this and it was i was so happy that they were because it was just at least he's being held accountable to some degree for what he's done at least that has like there's some type of justice however little you know at least there's some type yes. of repercussion from what he's done yeah yeah i mean he should have been put in i know there are like sexual rehabilitation sexual offender rehabilitation places for kids who have these things because most mm -hmm. of the time it's from trauma in their own lives that they're then yeah. enacting on their siblings which seems pretty fucking possible in this creepy ass church that keeps yeah. having people get arrested for doing terrible things to kids yeah things things aren't <sighs> things don't look good like it, it runs deep in, the, in those circles for sure yeah it's horrible all right well, so we're going to kind of go and do a chronological survey of the trial so mm -hmm. that everybody can kind of feel like they've got all the details in, one, in the right order, because I know that was hard for me. I've been reading, you know, The Sun and tweets and stuff, so yeah. we've been kind of mixed up. Yeah, I tried to put together like a comprehensive list of just like every day of the trial, what the big things that happened were, blah, 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 because yeah. It's there was a there's a lot going on and there's a lot of little things that I think people probably could have missed if they weren't paying as close of attention to it as I was, which I hope people weren't because I was a little too into following it. Yeah. It's like, you know. Yeah, it's one of those things where you're like, oh no, I'm so anxious because I'm reading the news, but I can't stop reading the news because I'm wondering what's happening. A hundred percent, yes, for sure. Um, also, yep. quick shout out to the Duggar Snark subreddit, which I talk about a lot mm -hmm. on this podcast and I'm a active member of, but I was on that subreddit like night and day during this whole trial and it was Ugh, amazing. The mega threads, it, they just, were the only way you get through it. For sure. So mega shout out to Duggar Snark and all the people on there because I was right there with you. Anyway, <laughs> so the first day of the trial was Monday, November 29th, and this was actually just an evidentiary hearing, which basically, mm -hmm. like we said, it was unknown whether or not um, testimony and evidence about Josh's molestations was going to be admissible into as evidence for this case. And the issue surrounding that was basically clergy confidentiality. They were saying that, mm -hmm. um, so Bobby Holt was the person who testified. She's a longtime friend of the Duggars and a wife of Jim Holt, who was a church elder. And she's the one who was testifying that Josh came to her and told her all this stuff. And I guess the defense was saying that, Josh came to her as a church elder and told her this under confidentiality. Mm -hmm. However, um, Bobby's a woman and <laughs> women cannot be church elders in IBLP. So there's that. <laughs> yeah. And they all knew that. And Josh was old enough to know that. Mm -hmm. So if he had wanted to go speak to a church elder, he could have. Exactly. He could have talked to Jim Holt. I mean. Right. Um, also, Bobby is the person whose name looks like Bob Ye. Bob Ye. Like. Bob Yee. So if you've been seeing that in the news, yes. it's Bobby. <laughs> Somebody mentioned on the subreddit that they just say it like Kanye, like Bob Yee. So I, every time I see it now, I can't, I cannot unthink that. Mm -hmm. I know. I, I keep telling you she's Bob Yeezy. <laughs> Bob Yeezy. Exactly. <laughs> so like I said, Bobby Holt is a longtime friend of the Duggars um, and her husband, Jim Holt was one of the church leaders. And actually, interestingly, mm -hmm. their oldest daughter, Kaylee, I think was her name. Um, was actually kind remember. pretty much betrothed to Josh. Like they were kind of in courtship, pre courtship at the time of the. Yeah, I think they had been like formally co courting for like a few months when this all came to right. light. Um, and then immediately after it happened, the court the courtship was you know <laughs> terminated, Severed. rightfully so. <laughs> um, so Bobby testifies. <laughs> Bobby testifies to basically what occurred, and she says that this happened on March thirtieth, two thousand three. 
Um, she claims that um, her and her husband were contacted by Jim and Jim Bob and Michelle to come and talk to Josh about some issues that they were having with him, I suppose. And during this, this conversation, um, Josh confessed to touching four of his sisters inappropriately, um, mm-hmm. including an incident that had occurred that day um, where he, quote, inappropriately touched uh, Jane Doe four while she sat on his lap during Bible time. I just want to fucking cut this guy. Every single time I read anything about what he's done, I'm just like, you know what? Mm-hmm. I'm going to fucking cut him. Yeah, <laughs> but I can't because he's going to go to prison. But <laughs> So, yeah, Jane Doe's <sighs> one through four. Like, Jane Doe four was the youngest. I'll just say that. So that's, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, um, Jane Doe four was five at yes, this point. Yes, which, holy yeah. shit. Um, so then... She further she goes on a little bit further and talks about an incident oh that occurred in actually February of 2002 where one of the mm-hmm. Jane Doe's um quote went and told his parents what he did and that he had confessed. And I just want to note that February 2002 is a full year before March 2003. So that Jim Bob and Michelle knew. knew for at least a full year that this was happening before they attempt- attempted to contact somebody outside of the house to help. I just want to put mm-hmm. that out there. And it's so fucked up because that means that he's been semi-courting this girl, their daughter, the Holt's daughter, for a year mm-hmm. as a known predator to his parents. Yeah. So then, further, Bobby testifies that Josh actually came to live with the Holtz in Little Rock, Arkansas, between January and April of 2005, which I would not let this man live in my house after knowing all that, but whatever. Um, So here, Josh was receiving regular counseling from Jim Holt um, as a church elder. And during this time, Josh shared more information with Bobby about the incident, specifically the incident during Bible time. Um, And she stated that he stated that he touched her over and under um, her clothes and also digitally penetrated her which fuck this guy I hope. yeah and then he also elaborates on the february 2002 incident and he said that one of the sisters woke up and hit him and then told uh-huh. and then quote snitched on him um, right like that's not a fucking snitch <laughs> no nope. snitches get stitches because they're snitching on stupid shit that doesn't involve them this yeah. is called standing up for yourself and self-defense and fuck them up if something is happening to you and you tell somebody about it, that's not snitching. That's just telling something somebody that about something that happened to you. Yeah, that's just standing up for yourself and exactly whatever like boundary. I feel like this goes beyond boundaries. Like this is like boundaries of like decency, not just like boundaries for my mental health. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing I really wanted to say about Bobby's testimony, which is very uh-huh. important, I think, is that she claims that she went with to, with this further information to Jim, Bob, and Michelle, but they, quote, didn't want to hear it. So. I mean, obviously, they sent him off to the Holtz house to live. Let's see. He was born in 88, so probably the last six months of him being under 18. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Fuck fuck them <laughs> it's just fuck the, fuck jim bob and michelle so much like i am so irate with anger like i mean and we i think you could put the puzzle pieces together and see that they probably knew before they did anything about it and they probably could have done a lot more than they did but this is just like clear proof that they were just closing their eyes to it and refusing to help mm-hmm. their fucking children and it's just it's despicable to me and jim bob and michelle and josh are the worst people on the earth mm-hmm. i know it's it's so fucked up and i hate it and i can't believe there's more than this honestly oh That's yeah kind this of is the just thing. the it's beginning like, this should have put this man in prison from the day that someone else heard it but alas here we are <sighs> yeah so the other important thing that happened this day is Jim Bob Duggar testif- testifies. The only time we get to hear from good old Jim Bob. Yes. And Jim Bob failed to give any specific answers at all regarding <laughs> anything that happened um, in the past. He quotes, he, re- he claims to not remember because, quote, it's been like 18, 19 years ago, a long time ago. Um, fuck you. You don't forget something like that. Also, you Mm -mm. didn't seem to have an issuer calling 
like the details when you talked to Megan Kelly like six years ago. So maybe if your if nope. your memory is like leaving that quickly, you might want to get that checked out. Yeah, go to a doctor or don't. For real. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I feel like I can't actively wish active harm on people because we're recording this and I don't actually mean it because I'm not actually going to physically harm someone, but, but yeah, I can say, I hope you have an untreated medical issue that you don't get taken care of and it causes you discomfort. I hope you stub your toe so hard tonight and Mm -hmm. it, that's all I have to say. Steps on thumbtacks. Exactly. You know, every thumbtack is always pointy side up. I hope you have... (laughs) All of that happened. <laughs> oh, so then my favorite part happens, though. And this, mm-hmm. at one point, the prosecutor, Carly Marshall, um, shows a police, the police report um, from this incident. And this police report image that they showed happened to still have In Touch Weekly's watermark on it because it had been leaked to the, that's how it was leaked out. And yeah. Jim Bob was very upset that they were including tabloid as evidence and he says i'm not going to allow it are you going to allow for that he says that to the judge and the judge (laughs) says if there's an objection to be made somebody will make it but it won't be you (laughs) i know fuck him up glad that this fucking judge had read the vibe of this family before which mm-hmm. I'm sure they'll be like, oh, the judge was biased. He just, he knows, he doesn't like Duggars, like they're trying to say. The prosecution didn't look for anyone else because they just star-struck. wanted to prosecute a star, yeah, the star, Josh Duggar. And it's like, Josh Duggar hasn't been on TV in a long time. Mm-hmm. Like, so- That was the first, the end of day one, basically. And no, there wasn't any ruling on this day. The next day, November 30th, yeah. was just jury selection. We did mm-hmm. find out some potential witnesses for the trial. We learned that Jill Dillard, Jedediah Duggar, and um, d- mo- that yeah, Jill Caleb Dillard, Williams. Caleb Williams is the employee of the car lot, um, and then Bobby Holt and Jim Holt, obviously. And these were uh, just like potential witnesses, not necessarily that they would. Yeah. Just people who can't be in court to r- watch the rest of it, so that they don't have their witness statement yeah. s- swayed. So all of these people, maybe they wanted to come to court, maybe they didn't, but they aren't going to be there. Right. Exactly. And um, just a spoiler, Jill and Jed never did testify, which I am so Uh glad that they didn't because... I know. I I don't think... I think they were only on the burner to testify if they absolutely had to, Uh, if the defense had uncovered some kind of weird thing. Yeah, I I agree. And I'm glad that they they didn't have to do that. Mm -mm. So a jury of 12 plus four, four alternates were chosen out of 52 potential jurors. The only thing interesting of note that I wanted to talk about is that one of the potential jurors that was like called to jury duty that day um, was dismissed because their daughter is married to a Duggar. <laughs> and it's like, uh, did no one just like cross check some I feel of the like names? That's a pretty, yeah, that's a pretty big one there. And even the judge was like, I'm surprised that this was not somehow filtered out, but yeah, you gotta go. <laughs> you could not be part of this. The only other juror that I remember that got booted was uh, one of the jurors who admitted to having read Duggar Snark. Hell yes. <laughs> yeah. I read it. Oh, and everyone God. was like, come hang out with us. <laughs> <laughs> for real though. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But that's about it for that day. The jury was selected. Mm-hmm. Then Wednesday, December 1st was like the first official day of the trial. And the first thing that happens is a good thing. The judge ruled in favor of the prosecution and will allow the evidence to be heard by the jury. Um, so that is very yeah. good news. It is, especially because, like, it's not in a case that happened before. Like, it was a police report, but there was no ever, like, investigations and whatever. Right. Yeah, investigation. So, you know, they could have said, oh, we don't know. the, We can't verify the veracity of these yeah. things, which I'm glad that they're just like, okay, we're going to let the victims, we're going to believe them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was really happy. <laughs> this was That was, like, the first, like, really good, like, good big sign that this was going to be a good thing for me because that was one thing I was worried about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. um, so then we get into opening statements a little bit. Um, the prosecution kind of goes into the forensics of the case. They This is where they get into descriptions of the CSAM, which I feel so fucking yeah. bad for this jury and fuck Josh Duggar for not just taking a plea deal and making everyone have to sit through all this. But yeah. um, they also talk about the incriminating statements made by Josh, which was when he like the cops showed up 
to the car lot and he says, mm-hmm. oh, has somebody been looking at child porn or like something along those lines? Yeah, like shut the fuck up, you stupid shithead idiot. And the fact that you said this, you knew it was for you. Exactly. Because if I were working at a car lot, the first thing I'd think I would be like, oh, is one of these cars stolen? Exactly. Oh, is, is, is there some kind of fraud going on? 100%. It should, like, I my mind would immediately go to some, some type of financial thing involving cars. Yeah. Not child porn, unless I had been looking at child porn on the computer, <laughs> you know? It's like, what the right. fuck? Okay, then the defense, um, they claim that they are going to go with the classic whodunit. This is going to be a, one of those, your favorite mysteries. You're going to have no idea what's going to happen. Which is like, shut the fuck up. Because yeah. it's like, what's the answer going to be? Josh Duggar in the office with the child sexual assault oh, materials? Oh, God, yeah. Ugh. And then they also <laughs> talk a little bit about how Josh <laughs> is too dumb to know how to do all the technical stuff. Which I love a good Josh is dumb defense, but like... Nah. He's not that dumb. He's not. It's That's really the not problem that hard. with him. He's one of the smarter of the nineteen because I think, you know, being the firstborn child yeah. gives you a lot of stuff, a yeah. lot of extra exactly. stuff that they didn't do with their eighteenth and nineteenth. Oh God. Ugh. So then, their first witness is Detective Amber Calmer. Um, she kind of just presents the peer-to-peer activity that she that she discovered on Josh's IP address, including photo and video CSAM evidence that was downloaded and streamed, which this is when part of the jur- the jurors had to watch portions of these, unfortunately, which I cannot fucking imagine uh-huh. having to do that. Nope. I'm definitely going to tap out if I get called for jury duty and they're like, okay, so it's a child sexual yeah. assault one? And I'm going to be like, nah, I'm good for me. I'm I'm. I think that was one of the one of the things they discussed that like you will have to look at this material if you don't think you can handle it like you need to tell us now because yeah yeah and I don't think I could handle it so nope nope I mean shit I think the only like the furthest case I think I could handle would be like murder yeah because I mean those are usually horrible things to look at but not in a surprising and horrific way that will hurt you like yeah yeah just (laughs) sexual assault stuff yeah no thank you i want to say with amber calmer she also was the one who said that he's been doing they that she found torrents on his personal computer Mm -hmm. but not that was like but not csam so it was just like you know he downloaded fucking the avengers movie or whatever right and in 2017 yeah. And so he knew how to do that in 2017 he's not gonna forget it by 2019 all the text still the same right (laughs) yeah exactly so then the next witness is Special Agent Gerald Faulkner of Homeland Security Investigations, mm-hmm. and he kind of just provided some background on investigating CSAM cases in general, um, and then played portions of a recorded interview that they did with Josh at the car lot. And yeah. one of these clips has Josh admitting to using Tor browsers in the past, um, and this was, I guess, brought up before like Tor browsers were like formally brought up in the case, and he kind of just gave that information yeah. to them. So. Yeah, he was like, oh, so this is how I access the dark web. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I don't know. I have such a hard time with these cases because, like, Tor has many, many case uses and is very useful for yeah. many things. Like, people who want to blow the whistle, people who live in oppressive regimes and don't have access to the internet. All of these things are very good. But as with everything, people will eventually become people yes, and fuck it awful. up. Yeah, exactly. It's not like... It's not like the dark web invented child pornography. People have been fucking doing it for ever yeah. since before the internet. Right. Not ever, maybe, but since before you know, the since internet, before the yeah. internet, people have been fucking doing this gross ass shit and spreading it amongst themselves and their weird, creepy fuckhead compatriots. Mm-hmm. Ugh, sorry, I just wanted to. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yell it's... about that a little. Yeah, it's fair. So that wraps up the first day. Um, I kind of have noted like who was there every day because it was interesting to see mm-hmm. who was coming every day. And the only thing I want to note is that Anna did leave the room for the portion where the the jurors watched the CSAM, which I mean, I get, but like, I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing that I feel that Jim Bob didn't show up to any of the yes. days except for the last one because I feel like you should have to fucking witness this. Uh huh. Yeah, exactly. If you're going to stand by this person, you should have to... You should have to see what they've done. Exactly. Because Jim Bob only came to the defense ones, which fucking pussy boy. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I hate Jim Bob. 
He's just like he's like, oh, I'm so strong and so cool and the headship of the family, and you're like, you're a weak little piece of shit who can't even keep his son in line and keep his daughter safe. Also, full has been outed as wearing a toupee on the Duggar Snark subreddit, and it is very clear. <laughs> yeah, that line. That so, line. <laughs> we don't. We see right through you, Jim Bob. Yeah. Okay, so the next day of the trial, uh, we start with cross examination of uh, Gerald Faulkner by the defense. And the questions uh, at this part surround why it took basically six months from when they discovered the CSAM for, to the raid, because I think this was discovered in May and the raid happened in like November. And he says yeah. that his reasoning for that is that there were cases where basically, I guess, CSAM was being produced, produced. and people yeah. like children were being hurt and those cases needed to be prioritized by people just downloading, which I mean, I get that makes sense to me. Yeah. So. And while I like, I know I've read lots of things from people who do um, CSAM investigations and stuff recently because I've been super interested in like how do you get into that line of work and how do you like survive yeah. in that line of work? Yeah. Like, how do you make it through just seeing horrible images every single day of your life? That holy shit! Yeah, like you can save some of them, but obviously some of them are gonna be not happy endings. No, yeah, for sure. I can't imagine. But. Anyways, all of them say that there's just such a huge backlog that, like, even kids who are super in danger aren't able to get saved because they just don't have the manpower yeah. and whatever can, to deal with this. I can see that. That's fucked up. And, like, yeah. how the fuck do you recruit for that? You're like, yeah. hey, you want to go look at some fucked up shit and we're going to, you know, maybe hopefully try and get the guys? <laughs> yeah. No. I, yeah. It's, <sighs> a, it's a nightmare. A nightmare for sure. True nightmare. So this is also where the defense tries to implicate Caleb Williams, who was an employee of the car lot, saying that he also had access to this computer as well, therefore it could have been him. However, the court objected to this line of questioning as Williams was out of state at the time. I believe he was in Illinois and he was um, he was being, I don't know if he was un in trial or something, but he was in trouble for yeah. um, sexual assault. So she yeah. was not fully not on the state, so... Yeah, he was not in the state. He was currently being tried for, I think, impregnating a 16-year-old. Great. Cool. As an adult man. Great people in this trial. <laughs> yeah, really. I love how Jim Bob's hiring of the car dealership really he knows how to pick is the best guys. He the knows best how people to pick work there. So the prosecution's next witness is Matthew Waller. Um, this a note. This is Anna's brother-in-law's brother, I think. That's the That's the relation. Yeah. Like his sister is Anna's sister is married to this guy's brother is I believe the relation yeah, which in their families means that the Wallers are part of the Kellers are part of the Duggars yeah they're all the same they're all you know one and the same so this this testimony kind of got a little messy um, he states that he worked into the car lot up until April of 2019 and this just a note the materials were discovered in May of 2019 um, and yeah. things got a little messy when the defense cross-examined and they talked about josh's password for this partition which is intel 1998 which we'll get more into that in a little bit um and he said that sounded vaguely familiar to him and so yeah i think the prosecutor the defense was trying to be like oh he knew the password but it's like i think yeah. he just knows it because he knows the brand intel and 1988 is like a year like i think yeah well and so the thing is is part of this i read when it was happening or like right after they got out for break for lunch uh, and they were saying that the prosecution had to clarify. They're like, oh, because the defense has asked you this question before in like, you know, previous part of the testimony or something or prep, they had been saying, you know, this password had the word Intel in it. Does that mean anything to you? Yeah. And so th he was like, yeah, you know, that could have been where I, why it sounds familiar because yeah. I heard it a couple of weeks ago when I was doing trial prep. Yep. Yeah. They were uh, definitely trying, just trying to trick <clears throat> this poor guy up and he's like, not. Yeah. I don't know if he has like the iq to be able to see that so uh yeah. it was just kind of a mess but i don't know i mean most of these people as anti-government and anti everything they are they still overall trust cops so mm -hmm. i think that's the problem with like matthew waller he's like you know i'm just gonna say some stuff and it's not gonna be taken out of context yeah. of course not yeah, you're exactly. like no sir you have to be very precise yes, because yes. they'll try and get you yeah for sure so then the next witness for the prosecution is Jeff Wolford, um, and his he's from Covenant Eyes. So Covenant Eyes is, um, I guess, a software that is for 
Christian people uh, who want to yeah. watch and make sure that their husbands aren't looking at porn. I think it's a, I think it was originally for kids. Yes. Like so And I know I I I've heard that it's used in like um like Christian schools and stuff like that to make sure that like kids aren't yeah. looking at stuff. Which, you know, kind of makes sense. Yeah, it, it, whatever. The fact that you had to do it for an adult human yeah, man. Yeah, it's like mm. fucked up. So Josh has been subscribed to the software since 2013, and I think Anna was his accountability partner. But he basically, this testimony revolves around the software and how it would not work it on this partitioned hard drive that was yeah, set up on this it, computer. It wouldn't see what he's doing. Yeah, it wouldn't see what he's doing. So it would not, yeah, it would not alert to it. That was basically all that was said by that. But I just, I love the yeah. idea of Covenant Eyes and Josh having to be watched by the Anna. Fact, the other thing that they had to do was that Josh was categorized as a mature teen in Covenant Eyes. That's oh. what this guy, the other thing he said. And I was like, well, all right. Mature teen. I guess at 33, that's something. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't call, yeah. I wouldn't call anything about Josh mature, but whatever. No. <laughs> So then then the next witness was Special Agent Jeffrey Pryor, who was present at the car lot when the warrant was executed, and he just went into detail about what items were seized and why. And I, this is kind of, I think, where the router thing started, like the defense. Holy shit, the fucking router <laughs> and the act, like remote access. Like, no, you yeah. have to physically turn off the computer to access the other partition. Like, that's what a partition is. It's, yeah. There's a solid wall there. Yeah. So. But yeah, the the defense kept trying to be to harp on how the router was never seized and that would have given them the information they needed, but it's like all bullshit and it was just really annoying. Yeah. <laughs> so then the next witness is James Fottrell of High Technology Investigative Unit of the US DOJ. Um, and he vividly describes the CSAM that was found on Josh's computer. Um, and yeah. this the jury vi- uh, privately viewed these materials. Um, and they, he also explained the Linux partition a little bit better and how somebody needed to be physically present to switch sides and there needed to be a, like a password entered. It's not something that could be do- done remotely. It's something that somebody needed to physically be at the computer to do. Mm-hmm. A big point I think the defense kept trying to make on cross-examination of this guy was that there was no evidence of CSAM ever found on Josh's personal laptop or cell phone, but like yeah, they keep trying to say, like, that means that it wasn't him at work. And it's like, no, it just means that he's smart enough to not use his home computer that I'm sure his wife uses, yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. Like, that that does not mean anything. His wife, who very much knows at least a little bit of how much of a shit he is, even if she's not looking for, like, CSAM, she knows he was on Ashley Madison. She knows he cheated. Mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> um, And the only other thing about this day that I want to talk about is Justin Duggar. Um, <laughs> oh, Jugger. <laughs> oh, Jugger. <laughs> So Justin showed up uh, with his mother-in-law, Hillary, and I don't, I don't know if Claire was there this day or not, but it was someone identified her as Claire, but it wasn't Claire. It turned out to be some other spivey yeah. relation. Claire was friend, here some but... days, but I don't know. It doesn't really matter. All that matters is no. that when they were leaving for the day, Justin exits the building and he turns to the camera and gives him two big thumbs up and a smile, which is um, not really the tone to go for no. here. And, like, I get it. He's young. Yeah. He doesn't know what's going on. Like, he doesn't really know the gravity of the matter, I don't think. No. Like, yeah. but, Ooh. dude, don't do it. Yeah. It's, it's like doing that at a funeral. Like, ha Yeah, like, no, this is not. Like, even if you think that your brother is n- not guilty of this, this is still a very serious topic. Like mm-hmm. you should, this is not something that you should be taking lightly. But yeah, I like I don't think he did it like to be an asshole. And, I think yeah, he, not like ha ha. He's gonna get away with it. I think he was just yeah, nervous. I, yeah, I do too. And I think that just shows you how young he is. And he's fucking been married for like a year and a half or something. Yeah. Like what the? I mean, fuck? he got married on his 18th birthday. Like yeah. Well, and okay. So I'm gonna put my conspiracy theory out Hell here yeah. to the world. Go for it. So. The Spiveys. The father, no, grandfather Spivey of Claire. Okay. Um, He runs the place that Josh was sent in 2003 for rehabilitation of, like, offending people. I think I did. Whatever. Yeah, I read that, I think, yeah. earlier. Yeah, and so I think I may have told you this conspiracy theory, but <clears throat> my conspiracy theory is that because Justin and Claire got married in 2020, 
and Claire Spivey, obviously connected to him, Justin connected to the Duggars. Are they trying to put these families together? Because this is after May 2019. Mm-hmm. They started courting after May 2019 when Josh got caught. Yeah. Like, is it? Could it be? I could, I yeah. Mean, is I mean, it just that it's a very small community? Possible. But. Yeah, but let's just let's just turn it into a conspiracy because we can, okay? Yeah, we can. <laughs> and we just have to always remember that the Spiveys are connected to it. They're not just yeah. They're not just married into the family. They tried to maybe fix Pest with prayer. It didn't work. It did not work. They should definitely also have to be there to witness what they've done. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. So then day three of the trial, Friday, December 3rd. It's my mom's birthday, by the way. Hell yeah. The prosecution calls James Fautrell back on the stand and he prevents, prevents, sorry. He presents (laughs) evidence that shows that the passwords to the Linux partition until 1998 was used in several of Josh's personal accounts and also includes Josh's birth year. Not really smart, huh? Including the Duggar family Instagram, by the way. Yeah, and the um their bank account and Anna got like all weird in court yeah. about having their like bank account password out there, and it's like that's mm, the least of your worries, honey. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> so then we get into this is my favorite evidence, which this to me is like this cannot be argued at this point. So I know. he's just literally not even trying to not get caught. He's not. They basically present a timeline that places Josh at the car lot a hundred percent when the CSAM was being downloaded. Um, and this includes geotagged photos as well as text messages. For example, on the 14th of May at 4 49 PM, he texts got stuck here to Anna Um, And then at 5.28 p.m., videos of minor girls are downloaded on the Linux partition side. At 5.38, uh, videos of minor girls are downloaded on Linux partition side. Um, And then more movies are are downloaded. And then at 5.48, um, he texts a customer about a car at the lot. And then he takes photos of the car at the lot right after at 6.04. So, I mean... It's he's not even trying. So like my favorite, not my favorite. It's not my favorite, but I mean my like, this is just the stupidest thing he's done. Mm-hmm. Is um the next day, eleven fifteen a.m. Um he texts that he's at the car lot and he'll be there until one. I'll be back, you know. So then three fifty five to five oh eight, he sent several texts. One of them saying that he would be at the car lot until six, um until like between five twenty and five forty five. There's CSAM downloaded there. Between 5 and 6 in general, five torrent files of videos were downloaded to the computer. And at 5.58, he texts customers that he'll be at the car lot for a while because he's had customers. (laughs) It's just like, there's no nothing. Like, it's just... Like, like, I don't know how you can be so nonchalant doing such a big crime. Yeah, yeah, like, no big deal. he knows it's a big crime. Like, he asked them, like, oh, was someone downloading child porn? It's not like he actually thinks that child pornography and regular adult consenting pornography are the same. Well, he knows he He had to... He knows the difference. Well, also, like, you know you you have to go to these lengths to Mm -hmm. get and view child pornography. Like, it's really not that hard, probably even with covenant eyes, to find regular porn on the internet. It's so much harder. Like, there's a reason for that, buddy, and you know it. Yeah. Yeah, like you can go on Tumblr.com and yes. probably find some teddies to look at if get, you want to. You can get porn eyes. on Twitter easily. Like, yeah, yeah, just like <laughs> set up an account and tweet something with the hashtag that's trending and you'll get 15 porn bots. 100%. At you. Yeah. Yeah. Just, um, but no, God. this fucking dude. He's so dumb. He's so dumb and such an idiot and just so without remorse. Like the fact that you can text your wife, I'll be home late while you're watching, like, horrible videos of like five to 14 year olds being assaulted and you're like be back later lol love you bye yeah fuck you you're broken the inside of you is broken for real (laughs) i mean 100 percent. there's something so wrong with him it feels like texting from like a bank robbery yeah like i I mean we i mean i'm glad he is this dumb because this is how why he got fucking convicted because if i were if i were a juror like, this would be the smoking gun evidence for me, I think, that, like, they mm-hmm. have this timeline. They have nobody else was there at the time. Nobody else had access to this computer or this partition. Like, he's been taking pictures of the computer screen. Yes. With, like, like a, it'll be like, you know, I think he took a picture of another car ad or something with his phone. Then 
turned off his phone, switched over to the Linux partition, mm-hmm. and started doing terrible things. Like, yeah, yeah. What the sir? Fuck? What the fuck? Um, <laughs> God, I don't even know. All of the all of the days are terrible mm-hmm. <laughs> that he did. And it's just it's outright it's him. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like this to me was so good, and maybe we'll try to put um like a link to this timeline in the um show notes because i think it's it really show it to me this is like 100 percent how like it shows that he yeah was the one that did this it. alone was like nail in the coffin yeah. for him yeah 100 percent. so then the defense cross-examines james fotrell um they basically ask a bunch of dumb questions about the router that was never seized and a thumb drive um and but Fotrell ultimately does not think it would be necessary and that either no. either thing would provide any additional information for them. The computer would also tell you if someone had remotely accessed the computer. It's not just the mm-hmm. router. Like, they're just trying... I mean, I know yeah. it's the defense's job yeah. to defend people and try and find any reasonable doubt, but also these defense lawyers are not, like, public defenders. Mm-hmm. They're hired shitbags by the Duggars, so... <laughs> yeah, yes. That's because the big thing about the big, I guess story that the defense is trying to paint is that somebody could have remotely accessed it on the computer but um Fautrell says that that's not true probably and there was no evidence of it and also even if somebody were remotely accessing the material it would still be playing on the computer that Josh Duggar yeah. was sitting at yeah when you collect when you connect virtually to a remote desktop to somebody else's computer you see, yeah you can see what's happening yeah, the mouse it's moves like on your screen and their screen yeah it takes over your computer so he would have noticed yeah. if somebody else was on the computer right yeah uh yeah just not not buying that really yeah. no no um yeah i liked james fottrell i thought mm-hmm. he was very he was knowledgeable witness. and very like tech literate while being able to like layman's term it for people yeah for sure yeah no i thought he he did a very good job so then day four was monday december 6th and clint branham is his name i believe a duggar acquaintance and he specifically said he was an acquaintance and not a friend yeah testifies for the prosecution and he states that um josh was very familiar with computers and that in 2010 he had a conversation with josh um, telling him about how to set up a Linux partition. And then Jim yeah. Holt further testified and said that he was present for this conversation and that it did happen. Yeah. Well, and okay. So, like, I do computery stuff. It's one of my little, like, hobbies is doing stuff on Linux and whatever. And um, to make a partition, it's really not that hard. Like, mm-hmm. I know they're trying to kind of frame it as, like, oh, this is high high tech knowledge. And it's, like, you just have to know. You have to be able to find the setting in Windows or on Mac and it says, you go and it shows your whole hard drive and it says, do you want to create a partition? And you say yes. And then you can install Windows on it. You can install whatever from the computer or you can install it with your own little thumb drive or CD-ROM or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's it. It takes yeah. literally like four clicks and waiting. Yeah. Like <laughs> you should, you just need to like know how to Google to learn how yeah. to do stuff. Yeah, exactly. If yeah. you can Google, if you know the word partition, yeah. you can get there. Exactly. Exactly. It's really not that hard. Um, So then Bobby Holt acts as the prosecution's final witness, and she basically, it's basically the same information that we went over already before, because that's the same, it's the same testimony, essentially, where he details the confessions that Josh had made to her, and yeah, I think that this was a a good final witness for the prosecution, like, Mm -hmm. like, letting the, I guess, I think it, not only shows that like this is it has been a, an issue with Josh for a very long time, but that like other people yeah. have already been affected by this man and his issues. Yeah, it's not that he's just innocently not innocently, but like not hurting anybody. Yeah, no. Looking at pictures, which you know the pictures themselves are hurting people, right. but there's kind of a difference. Yes, between assaulting a child and looking at videos. Which, yeah. Ugh, no, a hundred percent. They're make both my disgusting. Churn, but yeah, but but he's done it both. Is different. And he's yeah, done both. He's done both. And he has a history of it. And, and he, he has, hasn't changed. And he has seven children of his own. Yep. Um, this was the best part of this part for me was Bobby Holt was asked, not by the prosecution, mm-hmm. who should have set up this fucking dunk for her yeah, when Jim so Bob good. said, oh, I don't remember. It was 18, 19 years ago. The fucking defense is like, well, how do you think? Like, how do you know that all of this information Are you is sure accurate? It's right? It was almost 20 years ago. And she says... You don't forget something like that. It has affected my entire family. Yes. And it's like, yeah, 
that's the correct response yeah and that wasn't like and think about it like a hundred percent that was just her finding out that like somebody she knew and loved like did uh-huh. this but it wasn't even like to her own kids like yeah that's she f- couldn't have done anything to stop yeah. it she wasn't there she you know hadn't seen anything or been the one confessed to at the time like how that was fucking jim bob and michelle <sighs> yeah. and they're like i don't remember like how do you not remember the day that you learned that you f- like failed your children as a parent basically also it's total bullshit because we know that fundies fucking journal their asses off they write about everything oh yeah for sure it's just it's but yeah that was so good and i'm so glad that bobby got so that good. that got that slam dunk because whew. and the prosecution didn't do it because they're like we don't need to take the low blow like yeah. we've already got this case in that's the bag. The we don't need part to do anything is and that the they did it to themselves like, how could you even know mm-hmm. i don't remember 20 years ago it's like yes we all remember traumatic events from our lives yes however long they were yes i mean i yeah i mean like just this is not at all the same but like i was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes 18 years ago which is almost 20 years ago and i was 11 at the time and i remember that day so vivid i remember every detail about that day like that's just like those traumatic big days you do not forget no you don't especially when you're an adult (laughs) yeah when you're an adult that understands the consequences like kids and stuff may be able to like not know what it was and get through with therapy and stuff and kind of right. deal with that stuff. But like as an adult, you know what happened. You know mm-hmm. what that means. <laughs> I don't know, man. Fuck you, it's Jim so Bob Duggar. Up. That's all I have to Fuck say. Fuck you, Jim Bob fucking Duggar. So after this, prosecution <laughs> rests their case and the defense starts. Um, they call their fir- first witness um, Michelle Bush, a digital forensics expert. And poor Michelle. Oh my god. I so when I was catching up on this day four on Monday, December sixth, <laughs> I was reading this and I was like, This woman doesn't know what she's talking about. Mm-hmm. This woman hasn't touched a computer. Yeah. I don't know what's happening. And it was so frustrating because I was like, What? They're it's the end of the day? Like yeah, no yeah. one gets to tell this woman how much of a dummy she is? Like she doesn't know anything. She doesn't like she barely was able to explain what torrenting was. Yeah. And that's like easy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but she yeah, she kind of in this because this is the end of the day so it's yep. just kind of right before things are wrapping up and she goes into detail about her background in regard to investigations and then she t- tries to explain josh's computer set setup but <laughs> it it doesn't go great but she does say she contradicts con sorry she contradicts yeah. the prosecution statement by saying that she believes that a linux partition like a remote ex- access to it would be possible which i'm sure it would be but there's no evidence of it and that's the point well, and the thing is, it's like, it is probably possible, but it's also that, like, if the Linux partition is open, someone could remote access to it, but then someone would have had to open it. Yeah, exactly. 100%. That's There's, kind of the thing. Yeah. Like, for the most part, it's not a huge, huge use case. You can't hack a Linux partition. Right, right. And remotely access it, but... Like, it would already have... Yeah, it would start. already have to be on the computer open, like... Yeah, it would just be, like, hacking Windows or hacking somebody's Mac computer. Right, right. <laughs> Um, so then the next day, thankfully, we get Thank into, <laughs> we, we, lo- we J- Michelle Bush gets put in her place. Yeah. So the prosecution, <laughs> God, the prosecution <laughs> cross examines her um, and they start kind of with a hit to her credibility as it was kind of revealed that like the experience that she was talking about, like her years of experience, like also included like when she was in college, college, which is not, yeah, which really, that's not experience. Yeah, that's when you're learning. That's training. That's the up. Yeah. <laughs> And also it was there was a lot of like sh- questions about how many federal cases she's actually tried and it's mm-hmm. like apparently none. And so it's it just I think they were kind of trying to make her seem like you made yourself seem like an expert, but you're really. Not. Yeah, which is true. I mean, she did try to make herself seem like an expert yeah. and say some like really wrong things. Yeah, I mean, that's the whole even a non tech expert. Yeah, yeah, for sure. She this importantly, she also stated that she has never taken a Linux based course or had any formal training on the torrential downpour software, which is how LE locates like CSAM downloads. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of their they basically this is an easy description. It's a torrent thing that connects to a torrent and then is able to pull every IP address that downloads the file. Right. Yeah. So, so that's how they locate yeah, who is downloading it, the child the CSAM. And it's not like a crazy thing. That's like a very often used in yeah. investigations thing i've it's heard like, about okay. it a lot and i am yeah. not an expert in any of these topics exactly 
basically they just made her look really dumb and there's like so many things that they like called her out of not knowing anything about that it's like not even worth going into all of them but like she like never listened to any of the interview of the uh, of josh of the car lot she didn't know like anything about the contents of like she didn't know anything about the case Mm -hmm. it was very clear and this like i feel bad for michelle yeah i kind of do too (laughs) because like all of the stuff is stuff that her attorney should have prepped her with yeah and they didn't, and they didn't even know that they had to prep her with it, and that makes them the yeah. worst jerks. It just juries, it, lawyers. Yeah, <laughs> it just did not. It was just not a very good. It was mm-hmm. not very good. <laughs> I just feel so bad. They just tried to find anyone who was willing to do it for the like thousand bucks that you're allowed to pay. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Poor girl. I she know. didn't have any experience. Didn't know that she'd get shot down that fast. I know. But honestly, what? But also, you're trying to defend a child predator, yeah. which is really. Ugh, yeah it's yeah I, yeah it's <laughs> hard to it, feel a lot of sympathy it's uh, there's a lot of feelings so then the defense calls their second and final witness daniel wilcox who is a former homeland security investigated investigations task force member and um i don't really understand the point of his testimony i think so my this is gonna be my this is my guess when we get the transcripts of the trial there will be like 500 questions they ask this guy that he says either I can't ask this guy or I I can't answer this question due to it not being related to this case or something or it'll be like you know we didn't do that or it'll be like you know just very much they're trying to like get this guy to say one specific thing that'll help their case but he's not gonna say it because it's not true or whatever yeah (laughs) I mean I guess that makes sense because basically all well he was um sent undercover uh to the car lot to confirm i guess that the duggars were working there and Mm -hmm. um he did confirm that they were working there and that's like all basically that came out so yeah i think they thought that maybe we were gonna get something out of them but they did not (laughs) and that's all the defense rests their case after two horrible uh witnesses so yeah the prosecution didn't even cross-examine daniel wilcox which is why i think that he was like gotten by the defense and he's like you know nope there's nothing else to say except for they were there we were Mm -hmm. undercover and they were there yeah so then the last part of this day the prosecution calls back up james fodrell to stand as a rebuttal witness to respond to bush's testimony um and he demonstrates the process of downloading a linux partition and a tor browser and then he emphasizes again that no evidence of remote access was found on the partition Mm -hmm. so yeah. And downloading Tor is just as easy as downloading Chrome. Yep. It, yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. It's just another browser. <laughs> okay. We're getting, we're getting there. We're almost through it. We're getting so close. <laughs> we're on Wednesday, December 8th. <laughs> I know. Right. That was like two days ago. So yeah. the prosecution's closing arguments occurred. Um, attorney Carly Marshall took the stand and was really trying to make it clear that Josh was the only one at a car lot at the time. Like I said, yeah. I, they, I think they proved it pretty clearly with their timeline and everything. Um, they just went over all of that um, and basically were like, he was there. He was the only one there. He's the only person that could have downloaded this. Yeah, it's, he's the only one that could have set this up mm-hmm. and named it and used certain passwords. Right, like. right. Then the defense did their closing <laughs> arguments. Uh, attorney Justin Gelfand reiterated their points. Um, And they stated that investigators did not investigate any other avenues once they discovered who worked at the car lot as, quote, they were too starstruck about the possibility of prosecuting Josh Duggar. Yep. And of course, the prosecution, because they have burden of proof, they're allowed a rebuttal like in debate team. Mm -hmm. And the other attorney, I think second seat, Dustin Roberts, says, Y'all, this is, he's saying what we're all saying. He's like, no, no one gives a shit that it's Josh Duggar, except for the fact that we all know he's a skis bag. Mm -hmm. And the reason they didn't investigate anyone else is because there was no one else to investigate. Right. They just showed up at this guy's computer. He had the materials on there and they were like, you're it. And he said, what, is this about the child porn? Yeah. Yeah. He literally (laughs) says, this is not a very complicated case. He says, and then I loved this quote. He says, Mr. Duggar had his day in court. Now it's time to hold him accountable. It's time to convict Josh Duggar. Ugh, what? Man, I bet that's like every lawyer's like dream. Yes. Being able to have like a solid case like this and just being able to give that good. Yeah. Just convict him. Just do it. Yeah. And just like know it, like feeling good that you like put somebody that without a doubt, you know, was doing this away because I'm sure that that's not always the case. But like, this is like without a doubt, this fucking douchebag is doing yeah. skeezy shit 
Well, and fucking, like, he's the literal worst at it, too. Like, he wasn't even trying to cover it up. Like, I know that people who, like, produce CSAM do a lot, like, drug dealers and stuff where they try and obfuscate what they're doing. Right. Yeah. It's... He's just, like, sitting there basically fucking taking screenshots of the screen and being like, look at this video I'm watching. (laughs) What a fucking idiot. For real, though. (laughs) So then the deliberation of the jury begins, and um, they did ask to review a couple of pieces of evidence. The first was uh, at least piece of the audio recorded interview between Josh and investigators at the car lot, and that was granted. Um, and they also requested a calendar from March 2019 to present, but that was denied as that's not an official part of evidence. And so, yeah. yeah. Um, but th- the day ends without a con- without a, a verdict. And yep. I think a lot. I, I think a lot of people were getting a little anxious, at least on yeah. the internet. But I think a lot of people don't realize how long it takes to like talk through oh, everything. Yeah. And like the jurors have not had a chance to talk about this case to anybody mm-hmm. yet. Like this is the first time they're getting to talk. It takes hours yeah. to go through. It's also every single person has to agree. It takes a long yep. time. Yep. And I've been. I, I was watching before this trial started, and um, was Signs versus Kessler, which was the charlottesville heather hire Mm -hmm. um who got murdered by the car and it was basically richard spencer and chris cantwell and they were their own lawyers of course because they think they're god's gift to fucking man Mm -hmm. the signs versus kessler there the jury deliberated well so the jury deliberated for a long time but we were also shown the jury instruction documents like somebody post like one of the reporters posted them Mm -hmm. and it's like pages and pages and you have to check every single name, every single right. law that they could have broken, every single like piece of the law where they have to like, okay, this has to be intentional. This has to be this. This has right. to be that. And they have to gr- agree unanimously on every single point. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like a while. even, even if it's like a super straightforward, um, like slam dunk case, it takes a long time. It's just a process. Yep. And you got to make sure that process is done right. So they can't win an appeal. Mm-hmm. So then let's get into the best day, day seven of trial, oh. yesterday, Thursday, December yesterday. 9th. The jury reconvened for deliberation. Um, I think it was 8 or 8.30 that morning. And a little after 10 a.m., not very long at all, the jury announced that they had reached a verdict. And Josh Duggar was convicted on counts of receipt of child porn- pornography and possession of child pornography. <sighs> Um, sentencing is going to happen in four months and he's in jail until then, which Thank is God. the only time I've ever been happy about anyone in jail. Yeah, for sure. Like a hundred percent. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, yeah, it's just, it's, it's a good, it's it a was good so day. Much. <laughs> it's a good day. It was, it was a good day. Mm-hmm. And just watching him have to walk away and not be able to be in house arrest like he has yep. been, which is a privilege denied to many mm-hmm. on trial. Yes. <sighs> now yeah. he gets to go fucking think about it by himself for a while. Yeah. Have fun. Hope that the other inmates don't hear about what his charges are. Yeah, a hundred percent. Because that is, uh, yeah, not even murderers don't. Yeah, really uh, agree with the. <laughs> yeah, I think that's one thing that like literally every single person can agree on that like child predators deserve yeah. to rot. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, at my heart, I'm a prison ab- abolitionist, and I don't think prison should exist. And there's other rehabilitation ways, but the last persons to be released from prison should be josh duggar and people like exactly him. i 100 their last 100 percent. yeah we'll start with everybody for drug charges then we'll do violent crimes and stuff man we can leave the child predators in there for a while mm. they can keep so do we want to go into some of the statements and uh reaction mm-hmm. and things like that so i'm not going to read the full dillard statement because it's really long it's not really long it but is. it's just too long to read but it's yeah, really... and it has a lot of quotes from the yeah, Bible and yeah. stuff in it. So Honestly, I was really impressed by this statement. I thought mm-hmm. I kind of loved how they like I'm not Christian myself, but I kind of love that they used their religion to like bitch slap Jim yeah, like, hey and guys. Josh. Like, yeah. <laughs> you covered this up and that's against God's law. So hope you rot in hell, basically. Yeah. Um, But the quote that I really want to read, um, which is the most interesting part to me, is after a quote, a Proverbs quote, they say, we have been lied to so much that we wanted to hear the evidence for ourselves in court. After seeing all the evidence as it was presented, we believe the jury reached a just verdict today consistent with the truth beyond a reasonable doubt. Yeah. And like, fuck yes. First of all, um, I'm 100 percent like glad that 
Derek went every single day to listen and to, yep. you know, get the get the information for themselves because this is not something yeah. that you need that you hear secondhand if you want to know the information yeah. about it. Well, and like Jill was how old was she when Josh was assaulting them? Was she like nine? Probably like nine, I would say, maybe. Yeah. So like she fully remembers mm-hmm. what was happening. Yeah, yeah. And I think this probably will be good for mm-hmm. her because she's seen her parents lie for and about like for Josh lie about her. Yeah. It's yeah. I I I I feel so I'm just I'm very happy for Jill in particular. I just feel like she oh, yeah. probably is it's probably very therapeutic for her to watch all this happen. And I'm glad that you know, as much as like I disagree with Derek on like basically everything, I am yeah. glad that he is being a supportive, seemingly supportive husband to Jill because mm-hmm. that is what she needs right now. And she has never gotten that support before Derek. Nope. So And the bar is on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Um, they go in to talk a little bit about how Josh's actions have affected very many and that their hearts are with Anna and their children and they'll do anything they can to support them, which, I mean, I think is an appropriate thing to say. Like, I don't know. And I- it is. I mean, there's a lot of conflicting feelings I have about Anna. Yes. But at the end of the day, she's a woman in a church that actively oppresses her and lies to her with men who, I mean, Josh did bad things to the people that he met on ashley madison Mm -hmm. like he hurt them and abused them and anna doesn't know what sex is supposed to be like yes so who knows what she's been fucking suffering i cannot imagine what she's gone through and i it's it's easy to sit back and sit and like demonize anna and there are and i'm not like anna is has her issues she's a complicated character (laughs) she's literally like has children with this man and is complicit in that nature but she did not have much of a choice like literally her parents sold her into being the wife of a child pedophile like they knew about this of being a pedophile and she like what was she gonna do she didn't have an option so it's it's hard it's really hard to to think about anna and it has a lot of conflicting thoughts but you know who i don't have conflicting thoughts about is his fucking kids and i feel very bad for them and i'm happy that they're away from josh but like this is going to be very hard for them and they're still oh, yeah. like the, the the thing is like they're like what is anna what is anna's options like she's yeah. going to be with probably jim bob and michelle and like and if she's not with them she'll be with her parents right. who sold her off to them so like what it's just there's no winning here and it sucks i know and it's like it's double suck too because even if this was like the awakening moment for anna you can't send your kids to public school with the dad with a googleable name mm-hmm. as a fucking child predator your kids will get destroyed and it's not their fault but they will yeah yeah that's a good point i don't know it's just it's re- it's really sad and i just yeah. i don't even know i feel so bad for his kids and i think it's just gonna make the duggars even more insular and mm-hmm. isolate themselves so yep. that they just can't get caught for all of their misdeeds and it's just gonna be more and more secret squirrel bullshit with kids without social security numbers mm-hmm. so cps can't come fucking check on them exactly oh yeah <sighs> that was the other thing is i think that like anna denied letting the C- cps check her kids and, like interview mm-hmm. her kids and like i don't know how i feel about that <laughs> Yeah, like, I can kind of see you don't want to traumatize them more by having to do an interview about their creepy-ass dad, but also you should probably make yeah ask your kids if their dad has done something yes, to them. Yes, 100%. Yeah, like, that should be a priority. Yeah. I would think. I don't know. Yeah, I think that if I found out that my husband was a, was looking at child porn and was a predator, um, mm-hmm. I would be, my first concern would be for my children well-being i yeah yeah. honestly if my husband turned out to be a child predator if i found out like he got arrested like she did in may 2019 i think once he was released on house arrest i would have just murdered him (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) like i'm not a very violent person i wouldn't harm most people but like if i found that someone in my trust had done something this egregious Mm -hmm. like mm, i'm sorry yeah (laughs) i'm going to jail too (laughs) i would not yeah i would I would not be acting like Anna for sure, but also like I'm not in Anna's position at all. So no, yeah. God, we would have parents to be like, my husband's a predator. Yeah. And be like, all right, yeah, we'll fucking help you. Yeah, that was the other thing that was interesting is like, yeah, Anna's parents did not come to the trial at all. Like, they, you'd, you'd think that like I don't know if my if my husband was on trial for like something awful, my parents would be there to help me through it. 
That's all yeah. I have to say. <laughs> but, you know, maybe Anna told them to go fuck themselves because she's like, you guys fucking do. I mean. Don't show up. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah, that, that would be good. So the only other official statement that we have so far, we're recording this on Friday, Friday afternoon, Friday evening. Um, so mm-hmm. there might have been more between now and then. But Jim, Bob, and Michelle released yep. a statement. We've got, and we can tell it was very much written by Hi. Michelle, I think, because <laughs> it's it's short. So I'm going to read it. I'll do a dramatic reading. Do it. Let's see. How can I like put my hands so I'm like the most Michelle? Like, <laughs> yes. here we go. This entire ordeal has been very grievous. Today, God's grace, the love and prayers of so many, has sustained us. Our hearts and prayers are with anyone who has ever been harmed through CSAM. In the days ahead, we will do all we can to surround our daughter-in-law, Anna, and their children with love and support. As parents, we will never stop praying for Joshua and loving him, as we do all of our children. In each of life's circumstances, we place our trust in God. He is our source of strength and refuge. Thank you for your prayers. It's like, this is not life circumstance, fucker. No. Life circumstances are like, oh, uh, I... You lost your job. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, this is not one of those pesky little life circumstances that just pops up every now and then. No. Season of life. No, no one else does this. I hate how they... I hate... I just hate this statement, all of it. Mm-hmm. But um, I hate how... I hate the line, our hearts and prayers are with anyone who has ever been harmed through CSAM. Which, I mean, obviously, I don't hate that. Yeah. But, like, I hate that... It's- you should have been like, our hearts and prayers are with our fucking daughters that we didn't yes. do anything for. That's like, you're distancing it. Like, oh, these are people we don't know. Like, literally, uh-huh. four of your daughters, at least, that we know of, are yeah. abuse or a victim. This statement feels like they're just trying to distance that. And it's like, really oh, fucked yeah. up. Because those are your kids, too. And if you loved yep. them like you say you did, you probably would have helped them a little bit. and Maybe stuck up no. for them. No. Why would they do that? Girls are worthless. Girls, oh, yeah. you know. Good point. Which, like, Good point. It always really has fucked me up that Baptist, like independent Baptist churches like this have been so like anti woman and anti girl because they're also so like anti China. They're like, China makes you kill your girl daughters so that you can only have one kid that's a boy and they're like super fucking racist about it. But then they're like, Oh yeah, our girl daughters, they're expendable. We don't care. Yeah, we hate we hate sure. them. <laughs> they're there um, for taking care of our kids. They're they're yeah, they're the the sister moms that's all they're there for mm-hmm. um i don't know it's just I don't know. jim bob and michelle are the scum of the earth as well as josh mm-hmm. i despise them yep we hate them uh, we wish there was a way we could put them in prison too but that would be nice yeah they're not mandatory reporters so i don't really know how we could get them well that brings us to the end we've reached the end um we it's been a, it's been a it's been a stressful week. Um, it has been. But I am pleased. I am pleased, too. I'm glad that as much as justice can be served in a situation like this, Justin, justice was served. Yeah, for sure. And I know I, I've read, I've been reading a lot on, on the, mostly the Duggar, Star, Duggar Snark subreddit, but everywhere that, like, for a lot of people, a lot of victims of CSAM, this is very, like therapeutic for them in a way because a lot of yeah. them don't get the same justice and like seeing you know a, a higher profile person get this justice that they you know yeah. it's just... a white dude with people in politics around him with money with yeah. influence with a church of support like the fact that he was able to go to trial and get convicted is pretty much a miracle in the our fucking justice system yeah 100 percent. Right yeah so yeah and i can't i can imagine that like if for people who went through something similar as a child like seeing somebody get pay for it got for it get like that's got to feel so fucking good even if it yeah wasn't the person who you like your abuser or whatever i just yeah i I get that so for everybody i think it's just it's good except for josh thankfully yeah well and the juror jurors in general sorry y'all that you've all just been traumatized and probably need to go see some therapists for a while (laughs) that's what i don't get is like why the fuck did josh duggar not take up his the plea deal offered to him when he had no defense smarmy piece of shit like his defense was shit you'd think that if he was gonna say no to this plea deal that he would at least have some some defense Uh but they had nothing his defense was wasn't me (laughs) wasn't me yeah, that classic yeah. whodunit. I have no idea who it could have been. No clue. Let's see. There was only one or two people in the entire car dealership area, and only one of them had a password to the computer? Who done it? 
fuck them yeah for real um <laughs> i yeah that's the basic tone of this episode is fuck josh jugger have fun in prison and no yeah. don't have fun in prison not in hell in prison <laughs> Sorry. For real. Yes. That's, I hope you that's have the least happening. amount of fun in prison, and I don't often wish that. Yes, <sighs> for sure. Um, but yeah, like we said, I think sentencing will be in about four months. We will yep. keep you guys updated. Yep. He'll be in county until then. Yes, thankfully. Which, that was another yep. thing that was, like, unsure, is if he would be, like, kept or if he would be allowed to go before sentencing. But thankfully, they were just like, yeah, yeah absolutely not. He has to stay in jail. No, no you, you come here right now. You're <laughs> guilty. Come here. We're yes. going behind this door. You're staying behind this door for a while. <laughs> you little grease ball. You little fucking asshole grease ball. Fucking asshole grease ball. But if any of this content has been triggering or whatever, please speak to somebody. Yes. And talk to somebody. Don't go through it alone. Um, we can help you find resources if you need to. Definitely. Yes. We love you guys. We love you guys very much. And we appreciate you guys listening. And we hope that, I don't know, this has been... I don't know. <laughs> We've gotten closure on the Josh, du- yeah. Josh, Josh, Josh Duggar saga. Josh Dogger. Josh Dogger. God. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I, I was so happy yesterday. Like, I just felt yeah. so good when he, that it's just, it's, it, and it's, I don't know. It's just, there's a lot of complicated thoughts, but it's just. Oh, yeah. Because you feel so bad about so many aspects of it. And you feel bad kind of being happy because you're like, bad things happened. Yeah. But I'm happy that he's paying for them. I don't know. Yeah. It's it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. But that's okay. It's. Yeah. Yeah. But if you have anything you'd like to say about this episode or anything else, you can send us an email at tvliterate at gmail.com. And you can find us everywhere on the internet at TV Literate. We're on Reddit, Tumblr, Instagram, Facebook. We're everywhere. If you look for us, you'll find us. And we love getting interesting and weird, fundy news or reality TV news in general. Yeah. And we have a Kofi set up, www.ko-fi.com forward slash TV Literate, where if you want to give us a buck or two to help with podcasting expenses, we would appreciate it and love you guys for it. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, I hope this episode was... I don't know, sufficient for you guys. I hope you guys got <laughs> something out of it. We will be back with another regularly scheduled episode very soon. Yeah. Get some baits. Get back, yes. terribleness. Exactly. We need to. We need some cleansing. Just something that has nothing to I do mean, with. It's a low bar, but I think Gil Bates, if one of his sons was assaulting his children, he would beat them. I would hope so. I would hope that he would <laughs> at least do something. Yeah, I think he would do something. Yeah, I, I definitely don't have the same vibes I have from Jim Bob that I do from Gil. I have yeah, my issues. Jim Bob with Gil. and Michelle just never seem to even like or know their children. At least the Bates know their yes. children. Or at least, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we will see you guys next week with another episode. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.